out of their seats. We have something cool today. This is the Lawa lens, probe lens. This thing's kind of cool, but it's not as cool as this case. I don't know why, but I love this thing. Okay, here's the probe lens. Boom. This thing is really cool. And I feel like I have seen this thing on YouTube. I've seen behind the scenes videos and I've just always wanted to use this. So it's not something you're gonna use all the time, but you can get some incredible shots that are very unique and really turn some heads with the type of shots that you can get. The camera we chose to use for this was the A7S III, which is the perfect camera because you, you, know, you can bump up the ISO without getting noise and it's so good in the light and you need a lot of light for this thing. If you wanna learn more about the A7S III, I just did a review and a breakdown um, on that camera. So if you're interested in that camera and you wanna learn more, you can check that out. So a little bit about this lens is the aperture starts at 14 and goes to 40, which I don't know who has enough light to go to 40. I can barely get enough light on a set wide open at 14 uh, on this lens. This lens requires so much light. And I knew going into it that it required a lot of light but I just underestimated really how much light you need. But it's crazy how when you're at F14 macro right up against your subject, whatever you're shooting, the depth of field that you get, it's mind blowing. It's such a crazy thing. This lens is fully manual. So it is manual focus, manual f-stop. Nothing's gonna communicate with your camera when you connect it. The other thing is there's a LED light on the front of the lens, um, you know, so that will help with light uh, if you're shooting in a dark space or if you want to shoot some slow motion. And then how you power that is a little Samsung charger port right here. And I just plugged it into like a, uh, a mobile power bank thing. And then that comes with the, the cord, comes with the cord in the case for that. And then there's a little, there's adjustments on the, on the power, you can dim it um, and switch it on and off, which is kind of cool. The only thing I would say is I tried to stay away from using this light because it looks super artificial and it's not that high quality of a light. So yeah, I don't know. I did, I did shoot some 240 frames um, with it on because there's no way to get enough light to shoot that shot uh, without it, but I just don't like the way it turned out. It looks artificial, looks weird. So I would recommend not shooting with the light and just try to, to light it with your, with your own lights. Another cool aspect is the front of the lens is waterproof. Like what? That's so cool. So you can stick this thing in water, you can get it messy, you can, I don't know, if you're shooting fruit or food, it doesn't matter if stuff gets on the front of the lens. Um, which just opens doors to so many cool shots that you can get. I think a lot of people use this for product videos. And what I've realized is, I think at first I was trying to light kind of like a bigger set and shoot like wide and then come into the, the macro tight detail stuff. But what I've realized is this works really well for just small worlds. Like I think it, it's, it's not a run and gun lens obviously, but I think it's really about setting up your shot, building a, a little world or a set getting your lights as close as possible, um, and then getting those specific shots. The other thing I think you need with this, and what we used was a slider. You know, I just have seen on YouTube, everybody has a slider, now I get why. You know, it, it's not a handheld lens. On tripod, it's cool. You know, you can pan and tilt, but the thing is, is, you know, being able to put this lens through things or drag it across uh, a surface or whatever it is, or push things out of the way with the lens and move towards things. I think that's how you get the unique shots. So I would say that this lens probably isn't that cool without a slider. So I think they go hand in hand. So yeah, you can see we got some cool shots with it. I'm, I'm super impressed. Uh, it's not something I think you should use all the time. It's definitely a specialty lens. If you shoot a lot of product stuff, this would probably be something you'd want to buy. I think it's like $2,000, but I think for me, it's just going to be something that I rent 
uh, when I need it or when we have some, some cool ideas to use it for. I had some people ask on Instagram um, what this spray was that I was using and it's called Rose Water and Glycerin Heritage Store. Moisturizer you can trust. Harsh weather defense. And classic, soothing and pure. No, but I don't know, I found this stuff on uh, Amazon. Somebody made a video and, and recommended. What it does is when you spray it on a bottle or a can, you know, let's say you want that, that can or bottle to look wet. Uh, if you dip it in water, if you spray it with water, the water just runs to the bottom and you're gonna have a puddle. What the glycerin does is when you spray it, it sticks, this isn't gonna show up, but you'll see it in the video. So it sticks to the can or the bottle, or whatever the surface, and you get those water bubbles, but it doesn't run, which is really cool. You know, just kind of like a little life hack. This is super cheap. I think I found it on Amazon for like eight bucks or something. Thanks for watching guys. You're awesome. Till next time.